being sarcastic after spending the entire day yesterday uh, using every opportunity that was in front of him to restate uh, this claim that the president and, and, and Secretary Clinton are the founders or MVPs of ISIS, even going as far as to say, no, no, I really mean exactly what I said. Now he says that he was just being sarcastic. This is not the first time we've seen Trump try to step back or walk back from, from outrageous comments by claiming sarcasm. I think the question here is what he, you know, what is the definition of sarcasm? Just a couple of weeks ago, he said he was just being sarcastic after he had basically called on Russia to hack uh, Clinton's emails uh, to find those 30,000 or so uh, missing emails. So this sarcasm approach seems to be maybe Trump's way of apologizing without apologizing. The problem here is that the damage is already done. The concerns that were already being raised among a lot of Republicans and the, and people broadly speaking, th those concerns continue. Clinton when it comes to ISIS. So he sparked a firestorm when he called them the founder and the co-founder of the terror army. He says he meant exactly what he said. Listen. Last night you said the president was the founder of ISIS. I know what you meant. You meant that he created the vacuum. He lost the peace. No, I meant he's the founder of ISIS. I do. I, he's the most valuable player. I give him the most valuable player award. I give her too, by the way. But he's, he's not been... sympathetic to them. He hates them. He's trying to I kill them. It... He was the founder. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton says Trump's comments are more proof that he is unfit for the presidency. Here now with more on all this, I want to bring in Byron York, chief political correspondent, Washington Examiner, and a Fox News contributor for some analysis. Byron, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Let's start with the Clinton Foundation. How do they put this behind them? Or well, is that even possible, Byron? I don't think it's possible. I think what we see in the Cheryl Mills stuff is the uh, intense intertwining of Hillary Clinton's personal office and the State Department and the Clinton Foundation. Cheryl Mills, a longtime Clinton hand, she goes back to the Bill Clinton White House. She was part of the impeachment defense there. Then she goes, is on the board of the Clinton Foundation. Then when Hillary Clinton becomes Secretary of State, whoop, she gets up and leaves and goes to the State Department where she's Clinton's chief of staff. Hillary Clinton leaves the State Department. Cheryl Mills goes back to the Clinton Foundation. Now what we find out is that even while Secretary Clinton was, was uh, performing as Secretary of State, Cheryl Mills was still doing work for the Clinton Foundation. And remember, when Secretary Clinton became Secretary of State, the incoming Obama administration was concerned about conflicts, this specific stuff, about conflicts between the Foundation and her work as Secretary of State. She promised not to do anything that would create a conflict of interest or the appearance of a conflict yeah, of interest. That, that and was, here we have her staff in. working for both. Uh, explain the importance of Cheryl Mills because she's at the center of the Clinton world and their professional lives going back uh, 10 plus years. Absolutely, much much farther than that, uh, 20 plus years, back to the Clinton uh, White House years, the Bill Clinton White House years. She performed, she, uh, as chief of staff, she, she performed virtually everything for Hillary Clinton in the State Department. This whole email scandal that we talked about, she was a major part of clearing which emails that uh, Hillary Clinton would give to the State Department, which she would not give to the State Department. Of course, she was in on the secret email system. Uh, and what we, what we have here is a group a small group of ultra insiders, uh, Cheryl Mills, Huma Abedin, and a few others, who are essentially personal retainers for Hillary Clinton, who go in and out of government as Hillary Clinton goes in and out of government. And the question is, does their private work for the Clinton Foundation interfere with what they were doing yeah. for the government? I'm going to go to Republicans in a moment here, but just uh, last October, the Wall Street Journal did a survey and found that 42% believe that that server issue was very important to their vote. Uh, last month, that went from 42 to 55%. That, that tells me that voters are paying attention to this, Byron. And it tells you they don't think that Hillary Clinton is telling them the truth or telling them everything about the email situation. Remember, Poll after poll after poll has shown that around 60% of the American people do not think Hillary Clinton is honest and trustworthy. And the email scandal is at the very heart of that. This is the biggest reason that most people do not trust Hillary Clinton. Let's go to Trump now. Um, 70 Republicans signed a letter 